Today I'm going to show you all the uh, tools and equipment and the process that we use to powder coat our AFOs. There are two websites you should look up and they are eastwood.com and columbiacoatings.com and we bought our powder coater, the actual gun itself from Eastwood and we buy, you can get the powders from Eastwood too but I think they're cheaper and uh, we actually like the quality of the powders from Columbia Coatings better. So we order all of our powders from Columbia Coating. But the gun is the DG-10 from uh, Eastwood. It's their basic gun. It's about $100 right now on their website. Alright, so this is our powder coating box. We've got, it's just basically a box, obviously. And uh, We've got a door on it that you can close and stick your hand through if you need to, uh, or you can just you just powder coat with the box open if you need to. Uh, it's not that much different. We have a light on top. You need some pretty good lighting, and it's basically just a hole in the box with this light on top of it. And then um, you have your powder coating system that you have to work into the box. Uh, that's the main power unit. Uh, it's just plugged into a regular outlet and then uh, basically that runs to the gun that runs to your gun that you're gonna have and uh, you have a uh, pressure regulator on here because you only need the PSI to be like 3 or 5 PSI something really low like that and I don't know if this moisture catch, this moisture filter comes with the guns, but it's a good idea to have one because if you have water in your airlines at all, it can mess up your powder coat and then the, just the gun. And so, and then this is one of the canisters that uh, you'll have. And <clears throat> these hooks over here are basically grounded into the system and these can rotate. I'll show you the top in a second, but they can rotate so that uh, you can turn your part around pretty easily and uh, just so that you can, whatever you're working on, you want to coat all the sides pretty well. So having it be able to turn around like that is a good idea. And then this is the top of those hooks. As you can, let me see. Uh, like that, so you can see. So this is the top of the hooks, uh, they're both connected to this metal bar here and then that's that goes into the system right here. So those are both uh, tied into the system, this is tied into the system. This basically uh, as the powder shoots through this gun it charges it and uh, since the parts are whatever's hanging off of here, everything has to be metal, but whatever's hanging off of here uh, is grounded and then this is charged and so it sticks to the uh, parts that you have hanging from there and that's about it. Once the powder is stuck to that you can just pick up the part, go carry it over and put it in the oven or if you uh, you know if you get busy doing something else the, uh, the powder will stay on the part for a few hours or something. Uh, it'll just stay on there if you have to wait to put it in the oven. And this part over here, uh, it's running. It's running under, but it, it runs out of the same uh, power unit over there. This uh, actually, you need to hold this down whenever you're uh, shooting the powder, because this is what actually puts the current into the gun. Right now, there's uh, no charge between you know the gun and the uh, the hooks over there, and there needs to be. So, just uh, press it. You're supposed to hold it the entire time that you're shooting it. Uh, but just to show you, once you have pressed that, it charges everything, and then you can hear it arcs. Uh, you can see that the shape of this box is sort of uh, ramped up, like it sort of goes towards that hole in the back, and um, that hole leads to a vacuum. Uh, basically, when you shoot this powder into the air, well, you shoot the powder onto there, a lot of the powder is going to stick to your parts but a lot of it's not and if you have this door open or even if you don't I mean that stuff's just gonna get in the air all that powder and so it's a good idea to have a hole some kind of hole that leads into a vacuum line and we just have a little shop back here that it runs to and 
that way that'll basically pull the whole cloud that way and in hopefully um, apparently this powder can be pretty flammable if it's uh, just in the air combustible that's what they say at least I don't know we haven't had any problems like that but it definitely makes a big cloud and so have some kind of vacuum system to suck all the powder out so this is the canister that we had on the gun and these are basically just uh, a bunch more there's just the standard eight ounce ones and then they sell you know you could buy it in more uh, bigger sizes I guess but there are a lot of different colors of powder coat you can get uh, you just have to look through uh, the selection I mean you can match pretty much any shoe any leather or just anything that the patient might like the oven that we use is just a prosthetic oven I think that they sell powder coating ovens but I mean if it just needs to be an oven they can get up to 400 degrees so pretty much any oven and uh, we have this metal bar that's hanging across the top of this oven and that's what we hang our parts from or uh, if you have any sort of rack or anything you might be able to set some parts on there depending on what kind of part it is so this is a powder coated AFO and um, the good thing about powder coat is that you can match pretty much any color you can match any colored shoe or any colored leather or just any color that the patient might like um, and it's a lot easier than polishing the only really the only bad thing about powder coating is that let's say if uh, you have an AFO that's polished it's already it's polished silver basically and when it gets scratched up by the patient it just looks like a duller silver so the two silvers sort of match together if you have something black like this and it gets scratched up by the patient it'll start to you'll basically see the silver of the metal underneath it eventually and so that'll contrast with the uh, actual powder coat and you'll be able to see it a little more clearly but eventually once that does happen it's pretty easy to uh, just re-powder coat the uprights and so it'll look good again this is the part that we're gonna powder coat it's a you know just a double upright AFO and uh, when you're gonna powder coat anything like uh, this you want it all together already and you want if there are any parts with joints uh, you want the joints in you want all the screws in um, anything that's threaded like like let's say this double action joint or uh, a dorsi assist toe lift kind of joint cleansac joint whatever then uh, you don't want that powder coat getting down in those threads so you want to have all these kinds of screws in uh, just to sort of keep the powder coat out of those threads and I mean it'll coat the top of the screws and make them match too so you want to have all your screws in you don't need springs and bearings and stuff in uh, don't have your joints lubricated if there's any sort of grease or anything in the joints wipe it off because it will, uh, it's you're gonna put this in like a 400 degree oven, and the grease will get heated up, and it'll thin out. It'll sort of drip down into your powder coat, and you'll have drips in your powder coat. So any sort of lubrication, make sure you get that off. You're supposed to clean these parts really well before you powder coat, pretty much just to get all the dirt, grease, oils off. Um, these powder coating websites sell prep. Uh, it's, they, they have like sprays, liquids, whatever they are. Uh, they sell them aerosols and stuff, uh, all different kinds. But it basically just cleans off the part. Uh, we use thinner, barge thinner, um, and it seems to work just as well. You really just need to get everything off, get the part as clean as possible. And also when you're doing this, you're going to want to use one of these microfiber sort of cloths. You don't want to use a regular cloth or... Uh, a uh, paper towel or anything like that because the fibers will get left on here and those will get coated in with your powder coat and you don't want that so use a microfiber one use whatever kind of thinner cleaning solution uh, you need and just wipe it off just get all the marker off if there's any marker on here it'll show through your uh, coat unless you have you know a really dark black coat or something it'll show through pretty much any coat so get all your marker off get all your dirt off once it's clean also you're not supposed to actually touch uh, the parts so either use gloves or just hold parts that uh, 
aren't gonna be aren't gonna matter like maybe the stirrup down here or I hold on to this calf band because we cover this in leather so it doesn't really matter if it's covered or not um, but basically the the oils in your hands can get on the coat and it can also you know weaken the coat if you need to like let's say you're doing a split stirrup and you had your you had this all like this but these are just split stirrups and they sort of you know ended right there and there um, you would want to take this tape they have this high temperature tape that these websites sell and just wrap it around the ends that are going to go into the caliper plate because well basically then it'll actually slide into the caliper plate if you just coat the entire thing all the way to the end you're gonna have to jam it into that caliper plate it probably won't fit you'll probably have to sand some of the coating off or something because the coating comes out it comes out really thin but I mean you have it on both sides and all the way around and it definitely does add a noticeable uh, thickness to the material so this is the part that's going to be powder coated it's all denser out and it's uh, cleaned up and ready to go pretty much so you need a paper clip you're going to bend your paper clip to look like this and it's going to go through this hole that will eventually uh, rivet the calf lacer on and that's basically going to hold it up and you, this needs to be metal that's uh, holding this up because it's going to need to tie this metal into the rest of the system uh, everything just needs to be metal you're going to have your oven heated to 400 degrees when you need to clean out your, when you're going to switch colors you need to clean out your gun and basically you just take your air and you blow it all down here uh, you just get all the powder off you especially need to blow up this smaller tube because that will clear out the chamber and then you need to blow back inwards too and you basically just go back and forth until uh, there's no more powder coming out So this part's coated, let me get it out, look at it in the light, make sure it's uh, actually good. If there are any thin spots, just go back over it. Uh, it's all pretty basic. This looks like it's coated well. And uh, once again, you know, this, this doesn't matter to me, I'm going to cover that in uh, cowhide later. And this is going to be in the shoe, so... Uh, well the parts that are going to be in the shoe don't matter to me. And I'm just going to hang this, need to hang it on something. And then you just set a timer for about 25 minutes, 400 degrees. Alright, so uh, timer went off, I took this out of the oven and I let it cool off. Uh, it probably takes about 15 or 20 minutes for the metal to actually cool off to be able to handle it. So until then, you uh, should probably just pick it up by the paper clip or... Because uh, the paper clip cools off really fast. Or you can uh, use some gloves or something. Uh, if you want it to actually cool off quicker, you can run it under some water and it'll cool off really fast. So that you could actually uh, work with it. Alright, and that's... Uh, and that's pretty much it for powder coating. I mean, these are done. You just gotta mount the stirrup to the shoe and mount your calf strap and you're done.